sirens, as I had mentioned earlier, is used primarily for tsunamis. And that's the reason why many of them are found, almost all of them are found, on the coastline. The public is trained to seek higher ground in the event that the siren is sounded. In fact, on the website of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, the following guideline is provided. If you are in a low-lying area near the coastline, evacuate to high grounds. Had we sounded the siren that night, we were afraid that people would have gone Malka. And if that was the case, then they would have gone into the fire. And so that is the reason why our protocol has been to use WEA and EAS. By the way, I should also note that there are no sirens, Malka, or on the mountainside where the fire was spreading down. In this case, our internal protocol is to use WEA, which is the Wireless Emergency Alert System, and the EAS, the Emergency Alert System. The WEA sends alerts to, uh, by text messages to cellular phones, and the EAS are, sends messages to both television and radio. We're performing a comprehensive review to find out what the safest and most effective uh, science-based way it is to protect people. There are a lot of different um, geographies across our country. Some use sirens, some don't. Uh, so I tasked the Attorney General to do that. She's bringing in outside support as well. There's been some question about whether it could be done independently. The answer is yes. She has state, uh, stated to me from the beginning that that was one of the purposes. She'll, of course, review what she can. Uh, but we will bring outside uh, reviewers also. It's not a criminal investigation in any way. So the question is just around clarifying the, the body count or the, the death toll. Uh, where we are in general, 110 individuals um, have been confirmed deceased. Uh, we'll get some details about this from our, our distinguished leaders in police and fire. 110 is the number, 38 percent is the area searched. We have set up what's called the MINT, the Morgue Investigation and Notification Task Force with our local and federal agencies so that we can do these identifications right and proper, that we can use investigative needs and uh, means and measures with our partners so that we can make sure that we're finding who our loved ones are and that we make the notifications with dignity and honor. Better now. Right yeah. Right yeah. Right. You know, it's gone a lot of people's gonna react differently about the president coming here, but so a lot of people's gonna it's gonna leave their spirits say you know, saying that oh, okay, we're important. If the president comes here, we are important and, and help is coming our way. And some of the people won't care at all. But whatever, you know? We here we we all together in this and we just try to figure things out one day at a time. Any positive coming our way, we'll take it. We'll see it when he comes. We'll see it when he doesn't. We'll see it when he helps. A lot of talk has been going on for years and years and years. And this is just what it is, just still talking. That's what else can I say? We've gone through a lot. We're still looking for family members. But this is important too. Everyone needs to be fed. Everybody over there. 
I'm very, like I said, I'm very hopeful that him coming in will help expedite a lot of products coming in, a lot of, a lot of supplies that aren't, aren't able to make it. Like, I mean, like, like the guys are, I found out from guys that are staying at the hotel that if it's not FEMA certified or Red Cross, they're not getting the supplies that are waiting outside their door. So, you know I mean, it's frustrating. You mean keep the you mean keep the Hawaiian lands in Hawaiian hands, because there's investors trying to trying to come in and steal up properties and do whatever. You mean outside investors, not you mean and taking advantage of these people that are low. You mean so you mean putting a moratorium on the land staying in Hawaiian hands. As you just heard, I did just finish uh, briefing the president in the Oval Office to give him an update on the ongoing uh, recovery efforts that are um, happening in Hawaii. Um, and I will continue to provide him updates as we continue this response in support of the state of Hawaii. While I was in there, he had an opportunity to call Governor Green and let him know that he has approved the governor's request for 100% reimbursement for the emergency work that's being done for a period of 30 days within the first 120 days at the governor's choosing. Um, but I, you know, one of the things that I really need your help on, it's not as much as lack of communication and cell phone capability, um, it's lack of understanding whether they should or should not apply for federal aid. And we want everybody in Hawaii to know that they should apply for federal assistance. And if they haven't, we'll have people that will be going out into the communities, that they're in the shelters, they'll be at the DRC. They should start that process and we can work with them to start their road to recovery.